minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. Welcome to each and every one of you for this week's episode of Your Manchester. Now, I am joined this week, everybody, by an absolute legend. Yes, indeed, wearing pink and looking very glamorous and gorgeous. Mr. Carl Austin Behan, OBE, everybody. OBE. 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 DL. Kenobi. Have you got more letters? Yeah, I've got more. I've got What's DL as well, Deputy Lieutenant. Deputy Lieutenant of Greater Manchester. I'm an OBE. Old the Butlin's OBE? Entertainer. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yes. Here all night for you, everybody. In the next hour, we are talking to you, uh, bringing you wonderful people from the uh, band Calabro, everybody. Have you heard of Calabro? I have. And so it must be, for so it is written on the duke. That's as much as that as we're going to do, everybody. Have you got all of them? Have I got what? Have you got all of them? All of Calabro? Mm -hmm. No, we, we've got the, the two cute ones today. We have... Wonderful. Mm, Thomas Redgrave, Matt Pagan joining us live in just a few minutes, everybody. I'm jealous of Thomas Redgrave, though, because he's got longer and better hair than me. Mind you, on the plus side, I can take mine off at the end of the night. No. also tonight, we are, of course, talking to the George House Trust, everybody. Uh, because we've got to um, ask a question. That's why we've brought our little charity pot today, everybody. So, uh Darren Knight will be joining us very, very soon. And if that's not enough, we are talking about the places where you can go on holiday at the moment. It changes every minute. It changes every minute. Where would you fancy going? Just anywhere. I, I like cruises, but I, I know that's completely out of the question at the moment. Yeah, I like cruising myself, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's always a nice thing to do, isn't it? Uh, where was your last holiday before we went into lockdown? Oh, it was, I think it was Greece. I think it Greece. was. Greece, yes. Nice. Uh, I think mine was Cancun. Oh, did you have a, oh actually, no, I tell you, it wasn't. It was France, because we were up there. We went all the way to France to do the skiing, and we got there just as they announced from Macron that we had to come back. So I was there for a day. A full day? A full day. And, and you'd hate it if you'd together. gone somewhere now, and then you've just been told you've got to come back and stay past late, and then... Because they're charging an absolute fortune as well, aren't they? For the tests. For the, for the tests and everything else, when you yeah. come out and that, yeah. Yeah, well, travel counsellors will be with us a lot. I love that shot. It's nothing like what's human. Um, travel counsellors <laughs> will be... Well... <laughs> travel counsellors will be talking to us in just a little while's time. In the meantime, everybody, we are looking at my little screen. I think we've got one of them here at the moment. The, the other one's not here. But listen, you've had an eventful week this week. It's been a strange week this week with, yeah. uh, with, the, with, with the way that um, the villagers managed to come together again in Manchester. Well, we should just explain what happened. We were, most of the drag queens from the village were up 19 storeys, ready to do an abseil, and we get a message that the two main murals in the gay village have been ruined. Yeah, some, some am I allowed to say moron? Yes. Yeah, some moron decided to uh, scroll graffiti over both of them. Um, there's a Davina one, uh, Davina yeah. De Campo, that had quite a lot of uh, uh, yeah. writing over it with the with the devil six 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 on there as well, yeah. and then the the other one, the Alan Turing, uh, the the one with Fufu Lamar, and Emmeline Pankhurst again had graffiti scrawled over it, and it is just absolutely mindless. And considering you know Alan Turing, the the amazing man he was, the inventor we're that he was, we're celebrating him. You know, is, he, last week we were talking about 109 mm -hmm. uh, 109 years. Yeah. Uh, of his birthday, so you've got flowers 100 metres down the road in Sackville Gardens to celebrate his life, celebrate everything he's done. Obviously, he committed suicide, um, but then you've got some, as I say, mindless moron writing yep. over and scrolling over the uh, the actual artwork. But thankfully, um, I got a phone call off Ian Scott yes. on uh, on the Sunday morning from Canal Street Online. It is yes, yep. and and basically we managed to with the with the city council uh, with the local councillors managed to pull together and managed to get in touch with the local artists as well who all came together, and within 72 hours, it's as if it was nothing rectified. happened. My favourite bit of this was, they, they were so moronic, these people, 
that they decided within their wisdom to spell things wrong. Yeah, because yes. I, I wondered why they were promoting bar stools. <laughs> Absolutely. Like you say, though, you did manage to rectify it. So you just saw there that we've resorted it there. That's it back to its normality. And of course, the Davina one um, also went back to normal. I can't, but I love the way you covered it up with stickers, though, to start it, with. It, it was the, the, the Biffa bins, the Biffa bin bags. <laughs> You're outrageous. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that, you know, we weren't offending anybody. As soon as we found out about it, everything yeah. was covered up, uh, as I say. Because you never know who's walking down there. No, that's true, do you? Yes, I'm sure that'd be the first thing on their mind. <laughs> right, <laughs> OK then, everybody. Coming on tour very, very soon. They're back to it. My favourite foursome. It is Calabro. Calabro, live. The Greatest Hits Tour 2021. <laughs> At venues across the UK. Calabro, the greatest hit tour 2021. Tickets on sale now. Hey, boys and girls, please welcome Thomas Redgrave and Matt Pagan, everybody. Hello and welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Oh, it's amazing. Matt Pagan, we conversed only a few months ago about you becoming my singing teacher. I know. <clears throat> I think we were wise not to do that, to be honest with you. How are you, boys? I can't quite see you quite small over there. Where are uh, you? There we go. There we got you. Oh, We've got better. you. How's it been for you, first of all, lockdown? Um, it's been difficult. Um, we're definitely look forward, uh, looking forward to coming back and performing uh, this weekend, uh, which should yeah. be very, very, very exciting. The first time we've performed in a long, 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 long time. Uh, we just want to be back on stage, you know, like everyone else. We we just we just want to start performing again. Yeah. What have you been doing during lockdown? <laughs> what can you do? Um, no, we, uh, we've been we've been keeping in contact. Um, we've been you know keeping our voices um, up to scratch. Hopefully every day. Um, yeah, but apart from that, we're just um, surviving. That's all you can really do at the moment. Surviving. Now, you won, um, well, you did. You won Britain's Got Talent in 2014. And since then, th let's be honest with this, they have gone crazy, our little island. Haven't they? The world has gone crazy for you. Why? Well, um, we've, we've been very, very lucky. Uh, we've loved every second of it. And, you know, we, we're still going. And I think that's something that um, we're very, very proud of. We're... We're seven years in now. It's been seven years since we won the show, so it's uh, to still be going and um, you know still getting to go out and perform is is absolutely unbelievable. And like Tom said, we just can't wait to get back out there and do what we love. In a way, what what do you find that sort of you can do differently to try and keep it fresh? As you say, you've been going for seven years, so how do you manage to sort of keep sort of uh, sort of making sure that everyone's sort of still excited and everyone's really looking forward to seeing you? I think one yeah. of the, one one of the things that we do um, is every single tour that we do, we try and add something, like a little surprise something uh, we've done. Um, obviously, we're known for going on Britain's Got Talent and singing the stuff from Les Mis. And um, let's face it, we do sing a lot of depressing songs. So what we uh, what we try and do is add uh, like a Jersey Boys medley we've done. We've done a Motown medley. Um, we've done a title track from Greece. It's just trying to do something that's, a little bit different and um you know we love putting our our stamp on loads of different genres so just trying to keep doing what we do and i guess some something's working so we're, we're very happy now halloween time you're preparing in salford at the lowry uh what can we expect from your greatest hit show that that's right on exactly the 31st first of october i don't know if we'll do anything spooky at the Lowry, <laughs> maybe. Um, but yes, what you can expect from uh, that night is a lot of musical theatre. We always say that, you know, musical theatre, you, you share the songs with the audience. It's about sharing a, an emotion and a story with people. Um, that's why we, you know, we look out into the crowd and um, I, I, we see a lot of people crying on the front rows um, and hopefully for the right reasons. Um, but as, as I said, it is literally a, a connection between the audience and performer, and that's what we just really, really love about doing it. And I suppose with, with it being the musicals, there's, there's something for everybody, isn't there, in that case? 
Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, as Matt just said, um, you, you, it completely ranges from all of the depressing songs in Les Mis, <laughs> from um, all of the, the toe tappers, Jersey Boys is, you know, its own musical and absolutely everything in between. We do um, Disney as well, um, stuff from Anastasia. Um, so we really, we really have plundered the depths of, uh, of musical theatre repertoire. And have you found over the years your, your audience has changed or has the audience sort of stuck with you as you've been going through? The, the, the audience have been absolutely incredible. We've got, um, we've got a very special fan base that have stuck with us from, from day one. And um, we've always said, you know, we've, we've had times where we've been doing a meet and greet and we'd have um, a daughter, a mother and a grandmother all together. And so having three generations coming to see us is very special. And we, you know, I think we, we talk a lot of rubbish on stage and people seem to like that. So it doesn't really, it doesn't matter what kind of age you are. There's something for everybody in our shows and uh, no show is ever the same. So it's, uh, it's always a lot of fun. So the Greatest Hits Tour coming back and it's going to be absolutely sensational and rather fantastic. Is there an album that will um, accompany that tour? Uh, not this time, no. Um, it's uh... obviously been... I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, it's been um, very difficult, obviously, for everyone uh, during lockdown. Well, during lockdown is actually when we... Uh, not lockdown itself, but while when we couldn't tour, that was when we produced the Christmas album. Uh, but it's just and been a so Christmas long Christmas album now. it was too. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, but it, it's been so long since anybody's seen us perform now. Our fans are, are really kind of uh, just just really want to see us. Just really want to see us again. So, so we where, thought we so would where... uh, thought we would open back up with a greatest hit to to just say, look. Here are all of your favourite songs that you've wanted to hear over the past two years but haven't had a chance to. And of course, this weekend, as you did mention, this Saturday, you are performing at the um, Pop-Up Wonderful Festival. I don't know how they can call it a Pop-Up Festival, to be honest with you. It's 50, uh, 10 weeks, is it, of entertainment at Tatton? Oh, is it, is it 10 weeks, yeah. is it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, are you doing your full tour there or is it just a few selections of numbers? We're doing... Um... We're doing a lot of songs, um, so obviously having having been through all the lockdowns and um, and everything, as Tom said, we've been trying to keep our voices in as good a nick as we can because uh, we're doing uh, two big, very big sets uh, with all the biggest songs that we have. Uh, it's going to be absolutely unbelievable, and it's the one that you're not really you're not going to want to miss this one because it's our first one back, and we cannot wait. Well, I am very, very excited about this. I really am excited. How do you go about um, picking who sings what? How does it all come together? What's the process? Be fine. It's, it's, it's very <laughs> organic. Yeah, fight. <laughs> yeah, fight to the death. <laughs> um, no, it is, it's very organic. Um, we uh, go through with a, um, kind of like a musical advisor um, and we kind of hand out parts. And if somebody goes, you know, actually, I think you'd sound better on this part than me. You know, we, we, we swap it round or somebody goes, oh my God, guys, I really want this part in a song. That's happened, happened a couple of times. And we just go, yeah, no, absolutely. You can, you can do that. So it's, um, you, it's just your a, voices are so different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of give and take. Like um, a lot of the time, I know that I can't start songs as well as some of the other boys because my voice doesn't go quite low enough. Um, but then on some of the higher floaty bits, that's kind of my more domain. So we all have strengths and weaknesses, um, but at the same time, we, we just listen to each other. It's nice. It's lovely. It's absolutely fantastic. So once again, this Saturday, you are at the Tatton Pop-Up Wonderful 10-Week uh, Phenomenon. That's the only way I can describe it. There's so much going on there. We've got lots of information about all that's going on there. But the most important thing to focus on this week is that Collabro are there and live and together. Again, because the, the reason I should explain, there is four of you, uh, just two of you are, uh, uh, you know, we got the, we wanted the better looking two. Is that yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we, we opted for the butch two. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. So, yeah. Oh, look. Yes, we keep seeing your tattoos on Instagram and everything as well, Mr. Thomas. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. uh, well, and your well, piercings. Matt's got quite a few, Matt's got quite a few as well, but um, I think we you? all like tattoos. I have. Oh, uh, look. 
I've not even. Have you got a tattoo? I have got a tattoo. It's just my phone number, just so I know when I'm hammered and know where <laughs> to get home. Um, other than that, boys, thank you so much for your time today, thank you and very I shall much. see you on Saturday uh, to watch your phenomenal show. Thank you very much. Collabro there, everybody. <laughs> I love them, you know, they're so lovely. Now, um, we did want to look at something a little bit special, and so we wanted to speak to Mr Darren Knight from the George House Trust. Now, I know this is obviously something that's close to you as well, being the LGBT yes. zaza of, um, of our lovely... I'm sat on every wire possible, um, of our lovely fair city. And we, we were posed a question a few weeks ago about somebody, and uh, this made me want to get in contact with Darren, so let's welcome Darren first of all. Hello, Darren. Good evening, thanks for having me. Nice to see you thanks. both. Hi, Darren. Oh, thanks for coming, Flair. It's lovely to have you here. Now, we were posed a question and it made me... Well, I don't think I have the relevant information, so I wanted to speak to you and, of course, Cal, about this situation. And the question that was posed to me was... And it was perhaps a silly question in hindsight, but it was a question that I wanted to deal with. And the question was, does HIV affect women? Yes. Yes, it certainly Discuss. does. Yeah, no, it absolutely does. Um, and so I think that um, as kind of the world has changed um, from obviously back in 1981, um, when obviously it was seen to be a very much a, a gay um, virus. Um, nowadays, about 45% of people that access George House Trust services identify as female. And I think that's probably it, isn't it, Darren? The fact that for, for many, many years we were always told it was a gay man's disease and it, was, it, it just uh, was for gay men, especially um, in this country. Whereas we, we look around the world and we know how, you know, how many people are affected worldwide uh, with different communities, well, different groups and different, uh, with, with different people from across the world. Yeah, absolutely. I think the most important thing to always say is that HIV can impact anybody and affect anybody. And that's why we all need to know our status and have, you know, kind of control over the sex that we have. I think um, also understanding some of those different barriers that impact different groups is really, really important. And I think that there has been for a long time, um, for many women, they feel certain invisibility around HIV. And what we really need is to um, tackle the stigma for anybody living with HIV so we, that we see more women come through as champions. So at George House Trust, we're really, really lucky. We've got some strong female advocates that are willing to kind of put their head above the parapet. And I said to Belinda, if I'd a bit more notice, I'd have brought a, a wonderful array of them all with me this evening because um, we have women's groups and support groups and everything like that. And also um, at George House Trust, we provide formula milk to new mums. We have um, specific services targeting women. We um, recruit peer mentors who are women. Um, our positive speakers program takes women into schools to educate and inform. So everything we do is actually championing, um, tackling stigma for women as well as anybody else living with HIV. And at the, at the moment, obviously, because of with the way the lockdown's been, how are people able to access the services from George House Trust at the moment? Um, well, we're still delivering face-to-face -face services, so for those that need it, but obviously we've moved a lot of things online and via telephone, and that's really worked out well for people that access our services, because some people prefer it. Um, so we're offering a mixed offer, so people can get in touch with George House Trust and say how they want to have the service. So they can say, I prefer to meet somebody face-to-face, -face, and we can arrange that, or we can do it on the internet, or over the phone, so everything is still available. Now our group work has worked a bit differently and most of that's been going on via Zoom, but our one-to-one -one service advice and making sure we can get food to people and all those kind of things have still been running throughout COVID and will continue to do so. Darren, when we get back to normality and the restrictions are lifted, will the options still be there for people to have either face-to-face -face or on the, on the phone? Yeah, so we did um, our service user survey, which we do every year, and people are kind of getting to grips with having that kind of mixed offer. And if we're a charity that wants to deliver what people need, and as that changes, and I think COVID's triggered a lot of more digital interaction and interventions, then we're moving with the times and making that as easy available. So I think it's really good that people have a choice, and we're committed to doing that at George House Trust. And I think it, it gives people that flexibility because some people don't want to leave the house, some people you know, had a busy, tiring day at work, need that kind of maybe group support, speaking to other people, but doing that digitally really works for them. What we're finding and the challenge for us as an organisation is how do we meet the needs of people online and in person at the same time? And I think well, grappling with that over the future, in the future will be quite interesting for us, but we're starting to get to grips with it and kind of doing some stuff online, some stuff in person, and that's how we think we'll get around that. 
And I suppose in a way that that's, that's sort of better for, for services across Greater Manchester as well, for the fact that, that everyone can now sort of make sure that they can tap into the services that you, you've got available. Absolutely. Um, I think what's really important, though, that we don't forget is that digital poverty and digital literacy impacts people, everybody, but specifically people living with HIV from our perspective. And so some people can't get online. Then you've got confidentiality as well. So people might be in shared accommodation. They might not want to go onto a group and talk to it. So we need to make sure as an organisation that we have that facility where people can come and talk to us if they want to, because what we don't want to do is disadvantage anybody living with HIV. It's all, I say it every time you're on, it's all very amazing exactly what you do. Uh, if people are wanted to reach out, what's the best way for them to do it right now? Website, ght.org.uk. You can get all the information about telephone numbers um, who you need to contact if you want to get in touch. Our email address, talk at ght.org.uk as well. Um, and as I said, good old fashioned telephone. I just wanted to say woohoo to that wonderful box you've got on your table. Yeah, I spy with my little eye, yes. It just kind of appeared. I know what quite happened, <laughs> but it's very lovely. And um, it's not very often I say this, but I am looking forward to getting my box filled. Um, <laughs> so if anybody at any point wishes to put um, anything in my slot <clears throat> to fill my box, then feel free. All donations are going to the George House Trust, everybody. I always walk now, into the patron, trap. I'm now a, I'm, what, I'm a, patron. a, a patron ambassador. You're an ambassador, ambassador aren't you? Ambassador. If you're one of our amazing ambassador. ambassadors. Yes. Well done, congratulations. I get a poster. I'll be having yeah. an OB eventually, not just you, Flower, that's all. Okay. I'll settle for Dame. I'll settle for Dame. Dame Twanky. Right, Darren Knight, as always, an absolute pleasure to speak to you. And uh, we'll catch up with you in just a few weeks' time. Thanks Cheers, for your Darren. support. I appreciate it. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. All right, then, everybody, if you are interested in finding out what is going on whilst you are sticking at home, maybe isolating, then there is one lady who can tell you exactly what's on the box. Hi, I'm Hayley, and welcome to this week's On the Box. Now, the first thing that is on my list is the new series of Heartland on Netflix. That's just been released. Also on my list is the new series of Working Mums. I absolutely love this show. It's a Canadian sitcom and it's about a group of friends dealing with the challenges of being working mothers. Now, Jane the Virgin, if you want a really good laugh, Jane the Virgin is absolutely brilliantly hilarious. It's a comedy about Jane, a young religious lady, who discovers that she's been artificially inseminated by accident. I also have Holston on my list with Ewan McGregor. And this stars the women about the this stars Ewan McGregor playing a woman's fashion designer documenting his various ups and downs over the years. Now over on to Corrie. Aggie and Beth are both back this week, I think tonight actually, and they're returning to the cobbles for the first time in a very long time. Aggie's been on screen occasionally doing video calls, but they're physically both back this week. And new episodes are added every Monday for all of the week while the football's on. That's it from me. I'll see you next time. And remember, stronger together. <laughs> Oh, full hour. That was very good. Lovely. Very exciting and everything. I like to know what's on the box. I've watched that Halston, by the way. Have you? Oh, it's awesome. ever so good. I watched it all in one day. Really? Yeah, very, very good. It's about the fashion designer, isn't it? Yes, it is. And his tantrums. Yes, it is. And it's probably the campus version of you and McGregor that we're like, <laughs> apart from Star Wars, that we're likely to see everybody. It's quite sensational. Have you watched Halston? No, I don't. Do you watch I, much I, don't, TV? I, don't, I don't get to watch You don't get much TV time, do you? No. I mean, you've got your work and you've got your daughter as well, haven't you? I have, yeah. And your husband. I mean, that um, must all take time. It does. But the, yeah, we only we only started watching uh, Netflix on some. What was I don't even know what it was, but we watched something on Netflix. But we'd not even downloaded it or whatever until a few months ago. Oh. And then just one series of it. Do you watch more of your uh, much of your Manchester? I watch it every week. <laughs> <laughs> you know I do, I'm always messaging. You do actually, you always message it. So it's a very important programme, everybody. Uh, Beth's coming back. She is, yeah, it's Beth's coming back. Aggie's coming back. Yeah. There's going to be big scenes with her son James this week because he's doing, um, he's being interviewed by the press basically. Oh. And he ends up coming out about his sexuality because obviously he's been holding back quite a lot. Right. Um, because he's a footballer and he's a oh, bit afraid, that? so it's actually a really good storyline. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Tell you we've got coming up in it. We've got we'll cut to that other VT in a second, but can we just tell you, everybody, uh, coming up in the next week's programme, we have been very, very blessed with an interview from 
yeah, there, yeah. With an interview from from this lady, everybody. And it's an exclusive to your Manchester. Uh, Mr. Mark Llewellyn has been, well, let's just say, delving deep into the world of um, which camera on that one? Is it that one? I'm on that one. Oh, I'm not talking over there. Nobody tells me nothing. I love. Thank you. Uh, a very important interview with Julie Goodyear, everybody. It's, it's, it was an absolute pleasure. It's been that good. We're running it in two parts, everybody. And uh, watch our social media this week because there'll be more information bobbing up. Yes, indeed. In the meantime, tell me, people, either side of me, do you ever lose your mojo? Yeah. 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 Well, there's one lady, this is a good link, I'm like segue in my life here, I, I tell you. Well. There is one lady who is helping Manchester relieve themselves of bad mojo. That's right. Her name, her name is Jo Britton. In today's Minute of Mojo, I'm going to be talking about the M in Mojo, motivation. Because... If you're struggling with your motivation at the moment, but you need to find some, maybe to build back your business or get a new job or even lose a few of the lockdown pounds, then I'm going to share with you one simple tip that you can do to help kickstart your motivation. Because there's a huge myth around motivation and lots of people think that they need to feel or be motivated in order to take action. And actually, the reverse of that is also true. So when I'm struggling with my motivation, because maybe I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed by the size of the task, then this is what I do. I break the task down into the ridiculously small and take one little action step. And when my brain says to me, which it does a lot of the time, I don't really feel like it. I talk back to it and say, Joe. I know you don't feel like it, but just do a little bit anyway. So I take that first step and then I say to myself, well, can I just do a little bit more? And then I do a little bit more and boom, before I know it, I've started to gather some motivation momentum. I have given my brain a dopamine hit, the reward chemical, and that makes me feel good and I keep moving forward. So try it if you're struggling with motivation, Break stuff down into tiny, tiny steps and take one action step first. And then if you see if you can do another and another. Join me next time on A Minute of Mojo, where I'll be talking about how you can overcome setbacks and bounce back. And in the meantime, for a daily dose of motivation and inspiration, you can come and follow me on Instagram. I'm at joebritton.mojo. So there we go, that's the letter M covered. The letter M in mojo. Mojo, inspirational words there from our Joe Britton. Um, now, what's next? Well, we know that we've, uh, we're, 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 we're in a, a time with quarantine, aren't we? So we've got mm. red list, green list, amber list. You know, I think everyone's a bit confused where they can go, where they can't go, what they can do, when they can come back. So I just think we're in a bit of a minefield at the moment, aren't we? We are, and uh, obviously we've brought on, for that very reason, our mm. Gary Manners from the Travel Councillors, everybody. Um, yeah. He's here to help us well, I guess answer some questions because yeah. I, I don't know I think a lot of people are just fed up and just basically are thinking about a caravan in Scarborough really yeah. just because that's the only place to go whereas actually there is a lot more options available to them isn't exactly. there? Exactly well with with the um, decisions that the UK government's made we can now travel to Australia, Antigua, Barbados, the Balearic so you've got Ibiza, Menorca, Formentere, oh. um, they're all in, Grenada, Gibraltar. But what do you have to have to be able to go? This is the thing. Now, people are really confused because um, it's a bit of a minefield out there. Everyone's unsure what, what to do. So what I've done, I've made a little bit of a hit list to remind everybody on what you should do before you travel. So if this helps everyone, um, if you get stuck on anything, my number is 01618267430 and I'm there to help. So ensure first of all your passports are all up to date six months validity some countries are asking for 12 months wow take out valid travel insurance um which includes the covid19 cover and also um the refused boarding cover because sometimes you'll get to the airport and you may have the symptoms and they won't let you on the flight but there is insurance cover for that 
So make sure you've got a good quality insurance. What about cancellations? If they cancel, if they do you cancel, get your money back? You'll get your money back or you get a chance to transfer to next year. Okay. And, and so, has the insurance premiums gone up a lot? Slightly, not as much as okay. you would have thought. It's still, it's still affordable, but pay, it's better spending up on your insurance yeah. for sure. Um, download the NHS app. You're always asked on your second jab to download the NHS app. It's so important you do that. Um, Does that become a bit of a COVID passport now then though? Yes, of yeah. course, yes. But we've had a situation, I was just saying uh, to Carl earlier on, um, Malta's computer and the UK's computer aren't speaking to each other at the moment. So even though Malta <sighs> is on the green like list, countries anyway. you now have to get a letter from your doctor. <laughs> so um, Now, I'm, I'm, I'm presuming, because I know sometimes doctors charge for letters, but I'd like to think that they're doing well, that for free. Well, this is something I'd, I have no idea what if there'll be charges involved. They should but, be, though, shouldn't um, they? You would it think does so. take five days or more. Um, so, if you are travelling short notice to Malta, get in touch with your doctor straight away for the letter. Now, because that with, is a new requirement. With that, though, we've seen overnight that the decision has changed depending what what's happening yeah, on this, the very. This was literally so, yesterday. So, 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 you know, obviously it's changing all the time. I mean, what what would your big advice be for people who are thinking? Should we book something? Do we, do we take the gamble? Or do we think, you know, let's, let's have a, a caravan in Scarborough, let's go to the Lake District or let's go to yeah, Blackpool? Yeah, well, the UK staycations are really, really selling like hotcakes. The UK has become a great destination in itself. People have discovered that we've got a great country after all, you know, and, and it's, it's been absolutely amazing. Long live um, Pontins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, the UK has been a great seller and people are wanting to go abroad but i would probably say is maybe wait until the 18th of july see what's happening after the big announcement because that's when we're supposed to be the doors are open thing is, and we are a beautiful normal. we are a beautiful country yes. I mean, you know, yes you, and 20 yeah. minutes out down the road and we're in beautiful countryside you know we're in hills and we're, we're sort of everywhere but we've got on our doorstep really in this country yeah. apart from the weather and that's the only, that's the only, only problem um we, we, are, we are having a nice sunny spell here. We are at the moment. There's nothing you could follow out. a plan for, is there? <laughs> Not like our countries <laughs> that you mentioned in Our that. 2020 holiday was a hot tub. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Well, you're very lucky. You went to a hot tub. Very lucky. <laughs> I'll tell you so, what, where would you recommend then at the top so, of your list? Right, well, I have also got a list of offers going offers? in July. Yes. Oh. Believe it or not, there are offers still out there. Right. So, these are ones I ran off this afternoon. So the BH Mallorca in Magaluf, um, yeah. which is on the slides uh, that I've sent there. Mallorca. Travelling on the 17th of July. That's the cathedral there in Parma itself. Um, nice, that's the that beach. Nice. An all-inclusive travelling on the 17th of July for a week. Return flights from Manchester, £675. That's not bad that's at all, is bad. it? That's good, that, isn't yeah, it? that's going on the 17th of July. Um, Ibiza rocks in Ibiza if you want to party oh, yeah. in Ibiza. Going on the 11th of July for a week, 699 per person. So the offers are still the there. Office, the offers are still coming through. Um, Porto Palenza in New York, 24th of July for a week, all inclusive, 635. And do you think the offers are there because of the uncertainty? And, and the I fact think it's that a mix of people... that. I think they really wanted to get people moving again, so mm -hmm. the prices are down. Compared to Barbados, I can get you to Barbados on the 10th of August for a week, 1,949, because Barbados is open as well. And then Antigua on the 23rd for 1879 for a week bed and breakfast at the Blue Waters, which I was lucky enough to stay at a few years ago. That sounds lovely, breakfast. that one. Just, it? Yeah, right on the coast. Lovely. lovely. There's, so there's, there's lots out there. There's loads of places yeah. that you can go, isn't there? It's quite... But but you've got to make sure you've got the right... Do you have to pay for your jobs at either end as well, though? Yes. So, you have to, so there's, there's extra money on top of there that yeah. you have to consider as well. But travel councillors are doing discount codes on the packages. So Travel councils have got everything covered, got, haven't they? Yeah, hey, covered. I like it. You've and got... they're the recommended companies that, because the government is using accredited um, organisations for testing and making sure that they've got the customer service there as well. And is it still so, that sort of advice to make sure you book, you book everything on a credit card? That's another point yeah. as well, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. At least so, there's, there's some comeback then as well, isn't it, with a credit card? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Although, fingers crossed, let's just put this out there, we should be all right very, very soon. Yeah, the 18th, 19th of so July. So, at the moment, the there decision. is no harm in booking a holiday because by the time, hopefully, you've booked it and you're ready to go, 
you actually be able to go and enjoy it. Enjoy it. Which is what we all could do. Summer really 22 well. is selling really, really well. All right. Uh, September, October and Christmas. So, you know, we've yeah, got I all like the seasons I like going away beginning, beginning of the beginning of January. I like going sort of the beginning, yeah. you know, beginning of the, the year, sort sun. of put everything away, sort of. It's we normally nice do the first week there. in September <clears throat> and the second week in January, because that's when it's quiet. How do you think it's going to work with cruises? Cruises. You're well. obsessed, man. You're obsessed. <laughs> I realised what I said then. I said it. Are we still allowed to cruise? <laughs> Of course, yeah. Because <laughs> the, the thing is, there's a lot of ships that are just all over the place, aren't there? It's going to take some manoeuvring to get them back to, well, at to the, the ports moment, they need got, to be. All of the major cruise lines are in the UK waters because we've got Virgin, we've got Celebrity, we've got P&O, we've got the new Virgin ship that we've been supporting. Yes. So that's selling really well. The Scarlet Lady. That sounds That's fantastic. doing the, the around the UK cruise. So, oh, is it? Yeah, in August. Mm. There's six dates in August and September. I'll make sure That's I get your details. really well. Get a car. Gary Manners yeah. there, everybody, from the <laughs> Travel Councillors. Make sure you take him up on the opportunity of getting you a great holiday. Now, if you are planning on staying in the UK, then, of course, make sure that the weather is hunky dory And one man to tell you exactly what the weather is going to be this week is Mr Paul Rudd. <laughs> Hello, good evening, my lovely weather watchers, and welcome to this week's weather forecast with me, Paul Rudd. And a big, huge congratulations to our Belinda Scandal for abseiling down a very tall building in Manchester, all for charity, all for a great cause. Well done, Queen Bee. OK, let's have a look at this week's weather. Here it comes, here are the details. Thursday is looking cloudy with the temperatures of 19 degrees Celsius. Friday sunny and cloudy with the temperatures of 21 and as we head into the weekend right now Saturday is looking cloudy with the temperatures of 16 degrees Celsius and Sunday is going to be sunny cloudy with outbreaks of rain with the temperatures of 18 degrees Celsius. That's it from me I'll be back next week and now it's time to hand over back to the studio for this week's amazing episode of Your Manchester. <laughs> That is the weather for this weekend, everybody. It looks like it's going to be all right. It's not going to be it's too be lovely bad in Tatton Park. It's going to be nice in Tatton Park. Too. Are you going there again? No, we're not. No, oh, but I'm just saying it'll be lovely you were for those there people last who. Time, weren't you? I've been there a few times. No, I mean recently. This is the start. Oh yeah, festival thing. Yes. Because they started it this weekend, didn't they? Do you like the outfit, by the way? I do, it's very orange. Do you like the earrings, by the way? Where are they from? They're off a, a legend called Julie Goodyear via Mr Mark Llewellyn, everybody, who will be joining us next week. Um, and I must just also... <laughs> I must also draw your attention, because we've been doing the interview, everybody, and uh, it's, it's amazing what you can get in a Tesco bag when you just rummage through quickly and grab. Actually, in all seriousness, these were a little gift from... Uh, one of our interviewees next week. And, uh, and what, are, what are they exactly? They're salt and pepper shakers. Oh, I thought they were little bells. Oh, right, okay. Obsessed. <laughs> they are salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> I think I would just give it a little bit of a ring. <laughs> <laughs> You're still my favourite pin-up, I tell you. Um, they are salt and pepper shakers from um, Julie Goodyear everybody who's going to be um, doing the f her first part of the interview with Mr Mark Llewellyn on next week's show. Also on next week's show, we are bobbing down, believe it or not, I didn't think I'd ever say this, we are bobbing down to the Opera House here in Manchester, everybody, to find out exactly what is going on there. And uh, we're also going to be doing, well, let's just say so much, much more. So, have you enjoyed yourself today? I have. Not, not as nerve-wracking as I expected. Oh, there's nothing to worry about, Flower. We don't worry about anything here. It happens, it doesn't happen. What will be, will be. But one thing that will be is that you must also check out our podcast, everybody. Yes, if you can't be bothered watching us, but you want to have us in the background, then feel free to listen to us. We're on Spotify, we are on iTunes, and everybody, we're on Google, and we're now on Amazon, everybody, as well. So all these platforms, you can... Ah, cameraman just yawn. All these platforms, you can fully check us... Probably is past his bedtime. You can check us out on... In the meantime, Carl Austin BM, thanks ever so much for being a lovely host. A pleasure, thank you for and, having uh, me. Well, I haven't, but the wish was there. In the meantime, everybody, thanks very much. See you all again this time next week for our lovely programme, simply known as... Your, Your Manchester! Manchester.